and yeah, it was, it was really, uh, I, I guess I just took the plunge big time and I decided I'm just going to find a way to display a whole bunch of these figures in my house. And, uh, you know, I went about getting these acrylic pedestals and stands and yeah, it was, uh, I guess like that was all she wrote. I was into statues for the longest time, just collecting statues and collecting stuff that was more popular in that arena which would be like comic book stuff like um heroes and villains and you know characters like that uh and like video game characters and stuff like that that was my primary thing then a friend of mine um this guy bao he sort of uh said hey you know i'm invent i'm i'm gonna attend this um convention out in california called designer con and they do a lot of designer toys there you should like check it out or come and i went along with him and i never had the intention to sort of getting sucked into that world i just thought it would be kind of interesting to go and uh i don't know if i have any videos or pictures from it but um it was partly him and partly me just browsing on youtube where i got interested in that show and there was this one artist, uh, I can't remember his name now, but he had this beautiful Star Wars art. There was, it was like these paintings that were metallic sculptures that you hung. And um, it, one was like Darth Vader crossed with like AK-47s and guns. And one was sort of stormtroopers in the same vein. There were like these big, heavy, beautiful paintings. And uh, I was just like, I... I have got, if that guy's attending, I have got to see the art in person. And I ended up buying um, two of those metal um, sculpture art paintings while I was out there. And while I was out there, I was just looking at all of these very, very cool designer toys. And uh, <laughs> I think that actor Jack Black <laughs> walked by me at, uh, at one point with a camera crew behind him and with this amazing entourage. And I think he collects these. Um, anthropomorphic uh, Dunny figures created by Scott Tullison. Um, they're called, uh, the ones I, I love Scott Tullison's work. He has these, uh, these ones called um, Wendigos, W-N-D-G-O's, and they're kind of like these rabbit um, type figures that have like these beautiful horns and some of them are translucent. Some of them are blue and white and black and some are glow in the dark and then he has like these sort of uh, uh these other versions that are smaller that have polygonal ed uh, edges i forget the name of those right now but uh yeah i think like uh jack black like loves some of he loves designer art in general but uh yeah anyway um uh being at uh, uh at uh, designer con was just very eye eye-opening it's sort of uh, attending an event like that uh, kind of broke, snapped me out out of like uh, just being in this sort of uh, uh, statue uh, realm or just being, um, would, or yeah, I guess it just expanded my horizons and, and like what I was interested in collecting. But I, I love the juxtaposition of uh, different things, like whether it was like He-Man, Crosswind, BDSM stuff, or if it was, um, you know, f uh, food crossed with um, these sort of, uh, you know, uh, p popular temp templates of these figures, or uh, if it was just stuff that was like very punk rock or troop to power type stuff, um, or stuff that was crossing famous artists from the past with modern um, templates uh, nowadays. But uh, I just loved, uh, just, just like the, I, I just found designer toys way more creative and way more risk taking um, when it came to, um, you know, art in general. And it, I do notice like my art taste changing. Um, even like the statues that I try to collect now, they're more the ones that are coming out of China. Uh, they're more. Um, not really based on anything popular they're just based on uh uh just interesting 
uh, IPs or interesting ideas. I have like these set of busts that have like beautiful uh, temples or iconic uh, uh, scenes from the Southeast Asia uh, built in the back of the heads of these busts. Um, and uh, they represent different seasons. Uh, I should really just do some videos and sort of highlight some of these uh, very unique um, art pieces that uh, I've collected and maybe review some of them. I'll probably get around to doing that. This is uh, some of Rick Sands ultraviolet stuff. Very cool. And that was Surge and Destroy right there. We were just talking about some of his art pieces. I see that Plunderlings occasionally. I wonder if that's crossed with a sort of miniature board game. Another convention I used to go to often, I skipped, I think I'm skipping it this year's Gen Con. It's a huge board game convention. I used to be into board games um, for a long time. I have a pretty vast board game collection, but with the pandemic, you know, it reduced how often. I used to host board game nights and board game days, honestly, but uh, I don't get together with people as much to play board games. I do have some single player cool card games. I love some of the art. Um, for board games and uh, I love like the strategy and how you kind of find out about people and you know it's it, it's a it's a great way to socialize for sure this is suck lord yeah he I, I was intimidated <laughs> I get intimidated by that guy uh, his, some of his stuff is pretty clever. He has sort of that iconic gay empire figure. That's him sort of walking around with the pink uh, stormtrooper helmet. Uh, his company's called Suckadelic. Um, yeah, it's very cool. I, st I passed by uh, Tokidoki also, and uh, Tokidoki was... Uh, I kind of found out about them from when I went to Singapore's toy and game show. They used to call it STGCC and uh, they had like, uh, I actually met the founder, uh, Simone uh, Legno and I actually got a picture from him and he like sketched uh, a merlion uh, mascot. Singapore has like this mascot called a merlion, which is like a cross between a lion and a mermaid. And uh, he had like those Leona and Leo figures out there. But um, yeah, Tokidoki is very cool. I, the big giant bear bricks, see these bear bricks over here in front of Toy Tokyo. But uh, a friend of mine, Ben in Singapore, he collects them. I noticed like bear bricks are pretty popular, um, especially in Asia. Uh, the humidity is so overpowering. They can't really collect a lot of mixed media stuff. So. These bare bricks are and vinyls things are are pretty are pretty um, safe to collect um, and uh, ha will have longevity over there for sure. Some people might recognize some of these artists. Catatomic, he's done a lot of cool toys. Um, Sad Salesman that's there with those yellow snails over on the left. Uh, he had these adorable like piggy figures and uh, I saw like he has these surly fish that are coming up. Um, there's more colorways of those. Uh, Tim Clark, yeah, his, his stuff makes me think of those classic 80s movies like Labyrinth, uh, Jennifer Connelly. Uh, I remember those uh, classic animations like The Last Unicorn. And I recently read Secretly that was really done by Studio uh, Ghibli. But yeah, I, I love stuff that sort of is very transportive and takes me back to that time. And there's Clutter. Um, they do a lot of art shows, like I mentioned earlier. One of the themes I've seen them do is like colors. So they'll do like a show where everything is just purple based or everything is pink based or everything is blue based. And uh, all these different artists will sort of highlight a piece that exemplifies that color. 
um, the exhibition. They'll also do solo exhibitions for certain artists. Um, this weekend, they have solo exhibitions from CZ13, JFO, and Space Rabbit. Um, but yeah, they do really, really um, uh, fun art shows. Uh, I'll definitely try to make it up to Beacon to see some of their stuff. Uh, Armand Kendrick uh, is another artist who's done really cool pieces for them. He sort of mixes animals and, uh, and just like Japanese folklore. And he has like these sort of very cool samurai pieces. I have a couple of his wolf samurais. They're really cool. Newton HQ. See some cool figures here. Some quick, some DR76 Ouroboros, some jankies. There's a janky there with the pink hearts. In the corner there, that little house thing um, had the Simsky figures. I like those. They're really well done. Some of them are glow in the dark. Oh yeah, I, forget. I don't know if I mentioned it earlier, but this Ethos Gallery, I think it's actually called Third Ethos Gallery. I may have gotten the name wrong there. Um, there were two other artists, Masada Chaos and GXBXT. Uh, that art, those prints reminded me of like some of the art prints you would see for metal bands or maybe even like metal bands in Japan. When I went to Japan in 2019, I did go to one of those metal clubs. I went there a little early, but it, it was a very cool vibe there. Like metal is huge, huge in Japan. I love to go back to Japan. I went in the winter time and uh, I, there is some video on my channel of a food, just it's just a random video of me walking through um, Nico, where the temples are, or maybe me walking through um, a festival in the snow uh, up in Hokkaido in Sapporo. But uh, yeah, I'd love to go back to Japan in the springtime or maybe in the fall time. Um, I, I went to like uh, Kyoto, Osaka, Tokyo, Narita, I traveled um, to like the Ghibli Museum, which was like an hour west of Tokyo. Uh, I, I barely scratched the surface of that country. Uh, if I get an opportunity to move out there or live out there, I would love to take that. My Plastic Heart, uh, they, they had some really cool figures here. They, the Dumpster Fire exhibit. So there's this artist called 100% Soft. And he does like these really cool posters and um, kind of adorable versions of famous movie prints. Um, if you look up 100, 100 Soft, uh, check out his prints of Back to the Future or Aliens or Thing or, um, he has a lot of cool prints, but he designed like this sort of adorable dumpster fire and it just resonated with how shitty things have been during the pandemic and it kind of put an adorable face on it. But think of like a little dumpster with like a little fire coming out of it and a smiley face. And all these different artists um, took like this sort of vinyl toy that he made based on it and did really cool, interesting things with it. And um, yeah, it's just, uh, uh, I have video of that. I'll upload it. Uh, they did a recently did a second dumpster fire art show in Chicago. Um, this company and website Rotofugi just put up their pieces. I wish I could have gone out to Chicago for that, but uh, it's kind of hard uh, to get vacation time and go to all the places I'd love to go. I'd also love to go to Chicago and just visit that Galloping Ghost Arcade. 